This video will contain spoilers for The Last Jedi. When we first saw images of the Praetorian Guard, I'll admit they looked a little goofy to me. I just assumed the guys in the cool armor would either do nothing or go down without putting up much of a fight. But they wound up being a major part of my favorite sequence in the film. So naturally, I wanted to learn everything I could about them, and this information is coming from the Visual Dictionary. There are eight members of the Praetorian Guard, and they were specifically meant to be reimagined versions of the Imperial Royal Guard used by Emperor Palpatine. But where the Imperial versions hid their armor underneath red cloaks, the Praetorian allowed their plated armor to be seen at all times. They're protected by high-tech layered plates that have conductive wiring built inside. When powered, they would create a magnetic field that was painful to the wearer, but could deflect blaster shots or even a glancing blow from a lightsaber. But then again, as evidenced by the movie, a direct stab would still penetrate the shell. Each warrior was armed with a high-tech, close-quarters combat weapon. They were meant to be the last line of defense for Snoke who had grown physically weak in his old age. Each bladed weapon was paired with an ultrasonic generator that created a high-frequency vibrating edge. In addition, each weapon had an electroplasma filament that produced a small blade that could parry a lightsaber. The eight members were split into four pairs, so there were two sets of each weapon, which included the Bilary Electro Chain Whip, the twin Vibro Arbor Blades, the Vibro Volge, and the Electro Basinto. In addition to weapons training, each guard was trained in a hybrid of martial arts including Terras Kasi, Akani, Bakuni Hand, and Narkonji Blind Alley. Terras Kasi is a pretty well-known martial art in Star Wars, but Akani was a martial art used by the Imperial Royal Guards in Star Wars Legends, the Bakuni Hand was used by the Jedi in Legends, and Narkonji is the homeworld of Kanja Club, and considering members of Kanja Club are martial artists in real life, it stands to reason that they would have their own distinct martial art as well. Like Snoke, the identities and the origins of the Praetorian Guard are a mystery. However, their name dates back to the 14th Artisian Emperor of Kittel Fard. In Legends, the planet of Kittel Fard was also known as Artisia and was located in the Core Worlds. It was governed by the Kitzel Fard dynasty, which included 56 emperors throughout its history. They maintained control through a force called the Yavshin Swordsmen, who may have been the inspiration for Snoke's guard. I've heard some people asking where the Knights of Rin were in The Last Jedi, and some have suggested that they may have become the Praetorian. That's not even remotely confirmed, but I could see that as a possibility. We know there were at least seven of them present in Rey's vision in The Force Awakens. There could have been one that called in sick that day. We don't know enough about the Knights of Rin to say more, but I'll speculate for fun. I got the impression that the Knights of Rin were not Force-sensitive, but were actually fanatical followers of the Dark Side. They have yet to be seen wielding lightsabers. Luke mentioned that Ben killed most of the Jedi students, but some seemingly joined him. Maybe Kylo recruited some of the young, untrained students and kept them under his thumb. Maybe they had some Force abilities, but Kylo left them untrained, so he never had to worry about his knights joining forces against him. I could see them having at least some limited power in the Force, which would explain how they could hold their own against Kylo and Rey. So maybe Snoke decided he didn't like his apprentice having a small, personal, semi-Force-powered army, and he just took him. Again, that's all speculation, and it's based on only a few actual facts, so don't take that as truth. Despite their failure to protect Snoke and their deaths right afterwards, I think we will see them in some future stories. I'm confident that we'll get a book or something telling us about Snoke's rise to power, and if that happens, the Praetorian Guard will almost certainly be involved. But that's it for today. What did you guys think of the Praetorian? Would you like to see more of them in the future? Let me know in the comments. Did you have any other questions about The Last Jedi? Leave those in the comments as well and I'll do my best to answer them. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.